Yay, we did it. <laughs> okay, so the question is, can I, how can I increase the volume of the virtuoso? Well, the virt most of the time, the virtuoso is working off of the golden harp. Okay. And, okay, so then I go into levels balance, and then I have to go to the section that says others. Other, okay. Others. And I see my golden harp's at 100. Sometimes it's at 80, and it's like, well, no wonder. So then you got to hit that box and bring it up to 100. Okay. Yeah. That's what it was. Yay, we you got know it. What, you know what's something interesting about that, Carrie, is that if you're on an instrument, a, a newer instrument that has a balance button and you're only using the easy button in Golden Harp, if you tilt the balance to the left, it raises the volume of it as well. Oh. Looks like Joy's iPad has a question. Oh, no, okay. She, she took her hand down. Okay. We're good. No question? No. Okay. Okay. So, Carrie Price, you're on. Hi, everybody. I'm excited. I'm going to um, show you. Well, I had down a lot of features, but I had to condense it. It would have took about three hours. So, I cut it down to my four favorite features. And the first one is harmony. Yay! Now, harmony, let me explain. Oh, wait. Before I do my features, i got to start with a big song to get everybody going. That's and I'm gonna right. I'm going to start off with a swing march 6-8 with 76 trombones and Mickey Mouse march. Okay, so I want to talk about harmony, and harmony uh, affects the right hand and helps my right hand become full and rich, and it works off of whatever chord I hit, it's putting extra notes in the right hand. So I'm going to go over a lot of my favorite harmonies, what it's called, and how to use it, and what, what sounds go good with it. So harmony, what it does, how many are there, and what does it go with? So harmony, most of the time, adds notes below the melody note, like this. And you'd have to use your whole hand to do that. The first 
harmony I'm going to talk about is AOC, AOC, <laughs> automatic organ chord, or any old chord. Look at, watch this. I'm going to show you the harmony section, and they're purple, or sometimes red, but they're purple on here. So AOC plays three notes, so like this, and one finger, watch this. It sounds really good with organ sounds and sometimes saxophones, but I'm going to play organ with the AOC. AOC, yay! Plays three notes so you can sound full and rich. Let's say I wanted to do a big band sound. I'm going to take some saxophones and put it with the AOC. Here's without the AOC. With the AOC. Without. With, so they will see was Lowry's first harmony and plays three notes, the full chord for you, and why you play one finger. It's great for organ, great for saxophones, sometimes brass. The next one I want to talk about, some of you, a lot of you have, is the duet. The duet will play two, like this. I'm going to use one finger and put duets. You can, yeah, there we go. Two trumpets, the mariachi sound, or put on a guitar with duet. Great for also Spanish music. Or uh, fiddles. So 
here is the fiddle, the violin without the duet. This is the hard way. With duet. Yay! Or like this. The duet's great for when you don't want the three notes, you just want the two. Great for fiddles, trumpets, and uh, the guitar, also flute. Now the next harmony I want to talk about is the four part. Four part will play, let me show you what it looks like. You'd have to use four fingers to do the four part, and it's really great with strings. So I'm going to go into the harmony button and press the four part. Now with one finger, I'm going to get four notes. So that's the full complete chord for four part, four part strings. So you have your violins, cellos, and bass and violas all together. Also, the the big band sound sounds great with the four part also. Does that, does that make sense? Four part, four notes, you're playing one finger. Great for uh, uh, strings, horns, and the saxophones. Because that's what how many are in the band. There's four, four of them sitting there, and they're all playing not the same note. They're harmonizing for you. And so that's your four part. The next one I want to talk about is the five part, or sometimes also called block. It's playing five notes for you. Some people, when you work with them, they write in your music a sixth chord, and they put C6, and you're like, whoa, how do you do that? I got to play four notes together? Well, the block will do that for you, and that sounds like George Shering and Nat King Cole, and let me demonstrate that sound for you. There we go. Block. So when it says block, that's going to do five notes for you. It's big, full, and rich. And it's adding the sixth chord in there for you. Uh, block, there's also block strings. You can put the block on with the strings.
lot of you have the lush category and a lot of times that's what they're using is the block to make it really lush for you so that's five notes they're putting together the next one out anybody have a question about that okay the next one i want to talk about looks like oh. helen beam has a question okay great you can un unmute yourself. when you when you play uh use the harmony do you use it just as a solo or do you use the orchestra plus too oh well i'm just i wanted to not have a background going right now so they can clearly hear just i just have the easy button on right now just the easy button yeah, yeah. so i can clearly hear so okay. if i had just the easy button and put on the block with some strings. This is what that's what it sounds like. Okay, so you now don't I could add, either the genie or the orchestra. Oh, that's just now. Let me put on soft and easy, and that that genie nor comes on. And now I'm going to do that same sound with soft and easy. So no question, you can hear that right through the rhythm. <laughs> nice, big, and full. <laughs> so the block, five notes. Instead of using all five fingers, you can use one finger. The next one I want to talk about, there's two names for it. Depends on what model organ you have. For years, they called it polka harmony. And then they changed it to octave duet. And it's perfect for ragtime music. You know, the entertainer, watch this. I have to play an octave and then a, and then a, a well, a duet. Well, if I push polka, it'll do that same thing. Here we go. I can sound classically trained in one finger. The AOC won't do that. The polka harmony is exactly the notes that the entertainer played, and that's exactly the sound. So the polka harmony, just with the uh, Joplin stride rhythm. So it's also called octave duet or polka harmony. One finger, Joplin star. Now, I wanted to show you, uh, you can also sound like Rachmaninoff or Tchaikovsky or Chopin with that same feature. I'm going to take the uh, sound called society piano. Society piano with polka harmony. Check this out. So anybody who likes classical, I mean, you can take the sound called Society Piano and put it on with polka harmony. You sound just like Rachmaninoff and Tchaikovsky. 
So the, that's the, what I use for the polka harmony. The next two, I want to. I remember I was teaching a class once, and I said, "Oh, harmony always comes goes below the melody note." And then one of the guys was sitting there, was shaking his head, "Not in barber shop." And I was like, "What?" And that's when I learned that they mix harmony around sometimes. And uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is the country harmony, and that's how you get the Floyd Kramer sound. And your harmony, it'll say country. And what it does is it takes a note and puts it above the melody note and get, makes the Floyd Kramer sound. It's amazing. Watch this. Like this. Here's, here's the melody, last date. Here's what Floyd Kramer did. He put a note on top of it. Isn't that great? Well, he also flicked it. <laughs> So if you put on your your Floyd Kramer sound, what he's doing is he put take his pinky and he's making another note. Well, you just have to put on your Floyd Kramer sound, and it does it for you. Now I found something neat. I was like, wait a second. I remember when I would hear someone play Alley Cat. And they would do that same thing, like this. And I was like, wow. And I tried to learn how to do it with my hand. But I said, wait, what if I put the country harmony on with that? Would it work? And it did. Here we go. Yay! The same exact sound. That's if you like Alley Cat. And I wanted to play it like uh, that way. And it's with the country harmony. So country harmony also sounds great with vocal sounds. Watch this. Should be have fun with that country a diff different harmony southern gospel harmony similar so then there's one more harmony. There's, a, there's like 10 more, but I'm going to talk about one more. And on your organs, it'll say rock or fourths and fifths. Now, this is for the people who like classic rock, the baby boomer people. <laughs> people who like classic rock and want to sound like electric guitar. Well, what I'll do is I'm going to do put on an electric guitar and put on the fourths and fifths and play Proud Mary. Here we go. Here's the hard way. I was using two fingers there with the rock harmony. Here we go. So that's what I want to do about harmony. Harmony, yay! Hope you enjoyed that. The next thing I'm going to talk about is fill or effects. So, first of all, how can we do fill? And what are the different ways of doing fill? Well, the first way is the button, the fill button. So you have to reach up and you hit the button. The next way is the right kick switch.
Then the next way is the touch bar. And then the next way is putting it on your bass pedal. I lost my page. So whatever way is easier for you, you got the button, the right kick switch, the touch bar, or your bass pedals. Because this is going to be great. Got to, sometimes you want to kick it for a little bit and get a little fill. Sometimes you want to hold it a long time because there's new, there's new fill-ins you have. And then usually where it goes is where there's a tie note or there's some rusts. So let me show you some of my favorite fills. Let me just. Okay, so like if I did big band. or Broadway. Now some of the some of the uh, fill-ins are actually signature fill-ins. They go with a special song, like this one. I'm going to go in a big band and I'm going to do sing, 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 with the Vegas big band. And this one you have to hold the fill. Watch this. the rhythm for for wipeout surfs up So that one I held. So, okay. Or how about this one? Pennsylvania polka. Punxsutawney Phil. I'm going to do, uh, do the. And then we're going to hit the fill, and then it's going to do the hand clap.
So the fill-in, that's just great. I hope you're using your fill-in. Sometimes it's for a little bit. Sometimes you're holding it a long time. Terry, it looks like Sue Kelly has a question. Okay. I do. Um, I'm probably asking it wrong, but are the fill-ins, do they have to have a music style button pushed first before the, they're activated with the oh, yeah. ways? Okay. Yeah, like if, if I hit fill right now, it's not going to do anything. So no, every, <laughs> that's a good question. Like every, yeah, every rhythm has a fill-in, but up to okay. two to three, and some of them are endless. Okay. Yeah, okay. let me, so, like, that was a good question. So let's say I did just country. This one has two different fills. Watch this. There's that one. Now watch this. And it's all timed. And then there's this one. <laughs> did it. So there's two parts of a fill usually. And then uh, some of them are endless, like this March one. Watch this. It sets you up. hold it and go to a new song. So the fills, that's a good, when you have nothing to do, you can sit down and try every fill and hold it extra long to see, ooh, is there another part in there I, I didn't know about? And you'll be surprised. There's sometimes a third part, like this waltz. Watch this. arpeggio it came down it came down again it went up and then watch this it did a lot of fill I saw someone raise their hand no? yes that's Helen Bean okay Yes, can you use the fill on two or three different things at once, like your foot pedal and your, your uh, bar, touch bar? Yeah, sometimes if that happens, it turns and stops it. It cancels it. What? it. It'll cancel it sometimes. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't like that. So you can't yeah. always do you that. You can have them on there, but you just have to pick one when you're going to do it. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, whatever's comfortable. Some songs I change, like... Some songs I'm doing too many chords. I can't use my touch bar. I'll use my kick switch. Yeah. You know? Some but songs I hit the button because I want someone to see I'm hitting it. Like, I'm like, look, I just hit the button. But you can have it set up for both. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, a lot of places. Thank you. You're welcome. So add your fill in your songs. It'll help you with your rhythm, too. You better beat. Did you know that ever after every fill, it does a cymbal crash? Check this out. Watch at the very end of the fill, the cymbal crash. And that helps you hear the rhythm done. It's all about having a better feel of the rhythm. It sets you up. I mean, it helps you sound great. The ballad one. Let's go. I remember the day I found that out. I was like, whoa, hey, wait, let me try. Everyone has a symbol. 
So Harmony, Phil, now the next one I want to talk about is the transposer. So the transposer is a big thing. First, transposer has like four to five reasons to use a transposer. The original way I always used a transposer was for excitement. Going up during a song for excitement. And uh, you would just press the one on the right, or the one that says has the sharp, and it's like this. I went through the song once, and I transposed up one notch. Isn't that exciting? So you go up a notch. Okay? That's the number one use was for the transposer for a long time. Just going up a notch when you go through the song. Or sometimes there's a big part in the middle of a song where you can. But uh, the easiest way is at the end of the song, boink, go up and you do it again. But here's another use of the transposer. To make some instruments in the range that they were made. Like this. I remember I played the clarinet and it was in B flat. And I played the saxophone, and it was E-flat. So I had to go get a, all the book that said B-flat instruments, and then the one in E-flat. So let's say I went and got the Boots Randolph saxophone out of Nostalgic. That sounds great, but if I go to E-flat, check this out. C, here's E flat. I just love it better in E flat. Or if I take the clarinet and I went to B flat. Oh, that's not a clarinet. B flat. Um, or the next use of the transposer is going to, if you, you know, if you work with somebody and they say, oh, when they made that song, they originally did it in this key. And you're like, well, I only have it in F. And they say, oh, no big deal. Use your transposer. Go up a few steps. So when I play Misty, I learned it in the easy playbook. And it was in F. Well, until I listened to Johnny Mathis, and he did it two steps down, down the B flat. And I was excited, and then, it, and then I got a CD of Errol Gardner, who wrote the song, and he, he did it three steps up. I like that one. Using the transposer, you can get to the just different sac keys. Oh, I like that better. Ever since I started using the transposer, all of us, like the last few years, my ear got so much better. And here's the, here's the thing. We're going to play in C, F, and G. A long time because that's what the books are written in. 
But if you use your transposer, you're going to experience whether all these different tones. Your ear is going to get more developed. That's what happened for me. And because there's actually 12 keys to play a song in, and we played in three, <laughs> three of them. So use your transposer. Another reason, your friend calls and says, hey, I got a guitar or an instrument. I want to come over and play. Well, come on over. And then if he's not in your key, use your transposer, and you'll find it. Or if a singer comes over, and they're going to sing, and they go, I only sing in B-flat. No big deal. Okay, done. I'm in B-flat now. So those are the different uses. Or if you have your phone and iPad and you're listening to the original and you're trying to figure it out and you're like, that's not the same key. This is a little harder, but you can find the key and match to it and be in sync with it. That's what I like to do a lot nowadays. But the transposer, here we go. And the last feature I'm going to talk about is the glide. <laughs> so the glide is always on the left kick switch. It could be it's on your right touch bar. That's easy to use, or you can put it on your bass pedals also. I mastered it on my kick switch. The only problem is sometimes you blast it when you're trying to get to it. But uh, just keep going. You can do it. You got your kick switch, right touch bar, or your bass pedals. You can put it on. And uh, what Glide does is it actually takes your note, and it goes, it goes down one half step. And you got to let go. Now, here's the way. If you want to get it good, try, when you hit the key, hit the glide at the same time. But keep holding the key and let go of the kick switch. Don't let go of the key because then it's gone. And then you do like this. <laughs> But you could start off with Hawaiian because it's slow and it give you a chance to get to the glide like this. So sounds that glide are like horns. So what I would do is when you hit the key that you want to glide, kick the kick switch in and let it go. That's the glide. Or you can use your touch bar or your bass pedal. And... I'm going to just mix two things together. 
Sometimes when you glide more than one note, it sounds even better. So I'm going to use the harmony, the duet, with it, the, the Hawaiian guitar. So I'm going to put on the duet and use the, uh, the Hawaiian guitar with the glide. the glide so what I'm going to do now is uh, use everything in one song so I'm going to go to country um, I'm going to put on the uh, the duet with the country guitar so I'm using my harmony my duet I'm going to use my fill I'm going to transpose down the B flat for to make it a little deeper sounding. And I'm going to use my glide. Here we go. I'm going to take the honky tonk piano and put it with the polka harmony. This is going to be great. did it. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, your harmony, your fill, transposer, and glide can overnight help your, your, your songs sound better. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. So you are, so sweet, I don't know why it came up. Any questions? Any questions, anyone? Well, there he is. Hi, Robert. Hi. 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 Anybody have any questions they'd like to ask? I'd like to say thank you. Yes, thank you, Kari. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. One day we will play just. Great job, Kari. Thanks. Hey, Robert. Yes. Anybody know how to get my picture back? <laughs> Who's asking? Bob. Bob Lane. Bob Lane. Yeah, you have to go onto your video option and put start video. <laughs> yeah, that, I, that didn't do it. So. Did you cover your screen? With a camera? 
Did you cover the camera feature on your screen? Some people do that. No, no, no. I had I had the uh, a, a file picture out of my off of my uh, picture file, but no, I'm sorry, I don't know. Usually, it's just an option on the thing. Yeah. Um, but before we do some announcements, um, uh, does anybody have any questions for Carrie on the class today? Now's a good time. He's going to play one little last number for you before we adjourn. Um, anybody, any questions whatsoever about anything he's taught today? Oh, gosh, Carrie, like such a like good teacher. They don't need to yeah. ask anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a question. What's that? It is a good question. Carrie, hi, it's Clive. Hi. When you use the transposer, does it yes. show on the screen the key you've gone into? Yes. It does. it does. Sorry about that. Yeah, on the on your screen, on the right side of the screen, it says transpose C. Okay. Even on this side. Tempo, tempo oh, chord, yeah. transpose. It's on the right, and as I'm going up, it'll say what key it's in now. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Any other questions? Speak now, forever hold your keys. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to do a couple of announcements here. Um, let me just do this. And then, Carrie, you got something you're going to play when we finish up here? Okay. Yeah. All right, well, thank you. That was a great class. Um, uh, great class by Carrie. We got so much great talent here. Speaking of talent, tomorrow our Zoom musical is featuring... None other than uh, Andrew Leach. Now, some of you know Andrew. He works out of our Osprey location. And um, he actually helps. He's been with us uh, for quite some time now. A lot of people don't know because he's usually working at that store all the time. And um, he's going to be our featured Zoom musical artist. Next week, we have um, a couple of, obviously, we have our weekly classes. And we got a couple of little surprises in the next couple of weeks uh, coming up for Zoom Musicals. So stay tuned in for that. Uh, but for the product feature class, I had actually, we have, when we started all of this, every now and then I would get a student that would say, ask, I have a, um, a Voyager, which one of the product classes do I go to? Um, then I would have uh, someone say, I have a um, conductor, which class would I go to? And and what happens is we didn't have one really. So now we do. So we have, if you happen to have a conductor, Voyager, Regency, pageant, carnival, fiesta, or jamboree, we have a class just for those instruments. And it'll be in the email as I send out. And then on Tuesday, we are going to be featuring our uh, elite EX and EY, which is Aria, Grand Marquis, marquee and if you have a row to an inspire we encourage you to attend last but not least uh, we get in the habit of going to the website fletchermusic.com because um we are just we're in the final stages of getting basically all of the zoom links on there so it's probably a good idea to get <laughs> used to um going on and and looking at those uh um uh the classes and the calendars because over the next few weeks we're going to be, um, that's going to be a, a way of getting into the classes. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Carrie Price. Spotlight Perfect. Carrie. And Carrie, go ahead and do a mute all real quick. <laughs> Yay. And then play a little farewell for today's song. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to use everything on this one, even the virtuoso. I'm going to do a uh, little country. Hello. Thank you. 
Beautiful. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you. All of those features, Carrie. Great class, Carrie. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Love the song. Beautiful, Real learning, really great learning. Thank you, Carrie. Welcome. The teachers are great. Bye, Angela. Bye, Tammy. You're my very favorite price ever. <laughs> You're the best. Talk All right, soon, guys. Tam. Well, thanks for joining in. Blow a kiss goodbye, Carrie. Love you. Bye. 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 Bye.